Hello everyone, welcome to Throwaway Society where we we do a little bit of everything. We do some picking and try to find items like this or any item really that could be reused, sold, donated and we were just out. It's Friday and it is the holiday. Uh, actually a couple days after the holiday. It's difficult at this time to find anything good. You know, I did go out for a short time but I had to abort the mission because it was just I waited too long. I think I went out at, I had to leave around 4 o'clock and everybody's coming home. You know, there's cars everywhere. So we aborted the mission. There wasn't much to find anyway today. Like I said, because of the holiday, you know, next week uh, trash will resume to its normal schedule and maybe we'll find something. I uh, do have 11 subscribers now. Whoopee! I'm so proud of that. Thanks. Uh, every subscriber means a lot uh, that shows you're interested I do have a combination of things that I do here some of its do-it-yourself stuff uh, like I said I'll find something in the trash and if it doesn't work we'll try to get it working sometimes it'll work sometimes it won't so from my find it doesn't seem like much but this was my find I went out last night and got these nice uh, training skates for a little girl and some Avon bags, but it seems kind of weird. Why would somebody want some Avon bags? But I actually seen these on eBay under collectibles. Uh, they're good Avon bags. And then here's some plastic. You know, these would even be good for if you have a dog for picking up some, because they're going to eliminate the plastic bags. But there's a bunch of Avon bags, but. Uh, I think these are kind of cool. Now it even has the silica, the silica still in it. And you could see they're size 10J. Girls double blade skates, so pretty cool stuff. But today, let's take a look at this dehumidifier and let's see what's inside of the dehumidifier. We'll see if it works, and we'll see if we can salvage anything from it if it doesn't. So let me get it up on the tripod, and let's get to it. Okay, so we have this dehumidifier, and this was found in the trash. It was last week. And, you know, if you look at the outside of it, you know, it's not too bad. I did have this apart already, and it was filthy, but from the front of it, it looked clean. I did take out the the water bucket there and there is a filter in there and that was absolutely filthy um, so we'll try to turn it on and it does come on and for some reason I don't know if you can hear the fan the fan is working on low but as soon as you switch it to high the fan stops going. So I'm suspecting that's probably a relay or something like that in there. That wouldn't matter. That wouldn't matter so much as the operation. It, sh it should still work on low. Um, I did have it in the basement for a while. It did not collect any water. Um, so let's open her up and we'll see what's inside a dehumidifier and uh, if it's salvageable we'll use it if it's not well we'll take the parts out of it because there are some parts in here that we can use so let's get to it okay so we have this LG dehumidifier that was found in the trash and it was already a part uh, just to make it easier to show you guys what's inside of it and base basic operation here you have a compressor and that's important that that runs. Actually inside of there is a motor with uh, similar to a, a gas engine has a piston in it and it basically pushes the uh, refrigerant through these lines here. Okay and then we have the blower fan which uh, is going to draw the air through the front and through an evaporation or a condensation process it turns it into uh, the humidity into 
liquid which then drips off of the radiators inside and eventually ends up into the bucket that you have on the bottom. So I did notice on the onset that this unit, the high speed fan function doesn't work. And uh, that shouldn't affect the operation because it should run on low. I'm suspecting that that's probably a relay inside. Uh, could be a relay. Uh, that would make sense to me because it does work on low. And we know the motor is good because the motor works. So the controlling of the low and the high speed is probably a relay. But we'll look at that shortly. So I'm going to turn this on. And one of the first things you'll want to check is whether the compressor kicks in. Because a lot of times you'll have a problem where the compressor isn't actually running. So it's not going to produce any water. Um, so let's turn it on and uh, hopefully you'll be able to hear the compressor come on. Let's see. I think I had to unplug it and plug it back in before. We'll give that a shot. So we'll turn it on. So you can hear, but that's the high speed, that's low speed. So the compressor is running, and the fan is running. So that's normal. You know, you'll hear it, you feel it vibrating. So we know there's no issue with the compressor, at least mechanically. Um, so let's turn it off. So we know there's no issue mechanically with this. There's a, some thermal protection stuff in here. Um, we know that that's all good because the compressor is coming on and the fan does turn, uh, albeit it's only in low mode. It's not going into high mode but I typically wouldn't use high mode anyway. I mean, these things aren't the greatest things on uh, energy. Uh, it depends how much you run them. They are handy to have if you have uh, mold in the basement and it does improve the air quality. So let's take this cover off and we'll get a look at uh, what it looks like inside and try to explain in layman's terms how this thing operates. Okay, so we're gonna turn this around here. There's a couple screws here on the bottom. I'm going to remove this. Let's get this. So this this is an LG LHD659EBL, and it's not a new model. was filthy. I mean, there was, there's a filter in here, and this thing was just clogged up. I don't know if you can see that filter. The filter, was, you couldn't even see through it. It had a layer of dust on here. Inside had a bunch of dust. It was all cleaned off. Uh, sometimes that could be the issue where it's just dirty. You know, the person who owned this really didn't take that good a care of it. As I could tell from all the dust that was in it. So we'll get this up here. It's always important to unplug it before you open it up. And uh, for legal reasons, I, this is not a how-to video by any means. And you can open up this equipment at your own risk. I can't be liable for people shocking themselves. So if you have some knowledge on taking things apart, or you're just curious to see what's inside a dehumidifier, then this is for you. So we're going to take off the other two screws here on the bottom of this housing. this top off and get a better view of it. 
what it looks like. Let's see if I can get it. So here, here is where the the brain of everything is. You have a board in here. There is a fuse in there, and the fuse is fine. You have a couple capacitors. One capacitor is for the fan, and the other capacitor is for the compressor. And those obviously work because it, it does come on, and the compressor runs. But what's happening? And here you have this measure. This will measure the humidity level, which works in conjunction with this button here where you can do the humidity so it'll kick in it'll kick on and off automatically I already went through this and really didn't find a problem with it so here you see the looks like the radiators you have a condenser and then there's another another radiator they're kind of back to back and this should get cold and as the air is drawn in um, it's then condensed and turned into water now this was all cleaned up there is some rust on it um, we are going to run it just to see if these coils get cold these should these should get cold when the compressor runs it's pushing the refrigerant through here you kind of have these loops on the end and it passes through so I know that a common issue with these is refrigerant will leak out now I don't see a year that this was made uh, I know it's not brand new it does use R22 refrigerant and I'm not sure that they even use that anymore. So we're going to plug this back in and turn it on. And we're going to see if we see any kind of frost. This should get cold when we touch this. Um, if that's not working, well, at least we can salvage some parts from it like the motors and these capacitors because this specific capacitor again, there's a capacitor in here it's CBB61 that's a popular that's used in uh, ceiling fans uh, could be used in uh, air conditioners and so these capacitors can be used and uh, you know possibly some of the stuff the relays and the, the fuse on this board in here and certainly the wiring could be reused somewhere if you're handy like that you like to have parts around for doing different repairs so I'm gonna turn this around we'll plug it in and let it run and uh, we'll see what happens to these coils here see what what could be the problem because everything else seems to be functional here so let's do that and see what's up with it Okay guys, so it's been running for probably about 10-15 minutes and these coils are not cold. So unfortunately it's not going to be worth trying to make this to work because in order to do that you'd have to find a leak. There's probably a leak where the refrigerant leak came out of it. Um, 
these should definitely be cold and they're not at all. The only thing that got anywhere near cold was this portion here. And you could see it as soon as I turned it off, it, it melted. There was some ice forming on there. Now, there is a, a freeze sensor right on here. Then you have your humidistat there. So I'd have to say that this was thrown away for good reason. However, it probably should have been recycled. You know, just thrown in the trash. Probably isn't a good thing for the environment. Now we do have some things in here. Okay, if we can get a close up, we have the the large capacitor here, and you never want to touch uh, sticking your fingers in there and touching them. A lot of them have a you know a big uh, jolt to them because basically they're like batteries, but they store and release energy much faster than a battery does. Uh, to typically just to get the motor running give it kind of a push start you know here we have that CBB61 capacitor which is popular in ceiling fans and all kinds of equipment you know we could reuse that we have a board inside of there you know obviously we still have the issue with the high speed fan which is I'm probably gonna bet that it's one of these two relays inside of there. So, so the compressor motor is good. Compressor motor is good. I don't know if you could see that model number there. The compressor is warm. It's not. It's not too hot. Now these are sealed. Um, I have seen videos where they cut them open. You know, there is a motor inside of there. And you have the fan. So I guess what I'm going to do probably at this point is I'm just going to take it apart and use it for parts. But I just wanted to show kind of the inside workings of a dehumidifier. There's really not much to it very similar to what you'll find in an air conditioner. Um, it's a shame that this one can't be used, but as you can see it is kind of rusty. It's definitely not new even by a few years. You know this might even be, I hate to say 90s, but maybe t early 2000s. You know, if anyone has any other information on it, I really didn't bother uh, looking too much into when it was made, except for trying to look up the model number. And But I guess this will conclude this video. Um, that's basically what a uh, dehumidifier is. Really not much to it. I appreciate you watching the videos and finding some interest in ripping things apart. You know, this time we... We're not going to fix it. It's just not cost effective. You know, like I said, you'd have to have the uh, empty these lines out. You'd have to find the leak wherever it is. Could be a little pinhole somewhere, and you'd have to recharge it with. Uh, and I don't even think you could recharge it with a different refrigerant. That I'm not sure of. But at either rate, it's really not worth it uh, for the cost and for the condition of it. So. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, hit like. And thank you to all my subscribers. And if uh, we have some new people to the channel, subscribe. It helps out a lot. And you'll get future videos. I'm not going to bombard people with a video every single day. I think it's unnecessary. But whenever I come up with some things that I can fix, uh, we'll get into it. And as I said, sometimes we can fix it. Sometimes we can't. But we're sure going to try. So... Have a great day and uh, thanks for watching.